at one time, I would say in 1991, transplants uh, for chronic myeloid leukemia were the most common reason a transplant was done. Um, and it was the only way to cure chronic myeloid leukemia. Um, but in, imatinib um, was introduced in that year. And then transplants became very, very infrequent um, in chronic myeloid leukemia. Uh, last year, there were fewer than 100 done globally. So the question, um, the important question that arises is, have we discarded transplants too soon? I mean, is, do we need to re-examine the role of transplants in chronic myeloid leukemia? Um, with a couple of considerations. You know, one is that the survival of patients with chronic myeloid leukemia receiving these TKI drugs um, is about 90% of normals. So the survival of these people is, is very, very good. Um, but if we were to start with 100 people uh, treated with these tyrosine kinase inhibitors, how many of them would actually, at five years or 10 years, get off of that drug? How many of them would have what we call therapy-free remission? And the answer is only 15 in 100. So 85% of them have either failed um, or have to remain on this for the rest of their lives. So that's, that's the reality, despite this extraordinary progress um, with these drugs. Um, in fact, most people will have to stay on it all of their lives. Well, you know, that's one thing if you're 70 years old and you have heart disease and diabetes, and if you have to be on it for another 10 years and are likely to die of a heart attack, that's probably okay. But what if you're 35 and otherwise healthy and you're looking at 40 more years um, of TKI therapy? And it, they have you know, adverse effects. Um, there's a, certainly a, a financial impact. For example, uh, in China where I work, you may bankrupt your family if you have to be on this for 40 years. Um, okay, now if we switch to transplants, where are we? Well. Um, our, our success rates with transplants, d immediate deaths, has decreased about 20 percent. Um, we uh, have less intensive preparation for the transplant, uh, so-called reduced intensity conditioning, um, which allows us to transplant older patients. Um, and um, now, we can find a donor for virtually everybody because we can use a relative, usually a sibling, who shares half of their genetics with the person. So, and we can use some very cheap drugs, post-transplant, cyclophosphamide. So the transplant field, since the introduction of imatinib, has moved dramatically, um, as, and TKI therapy has moved dramatically. So, sort of coming to the bottom line of all of this, what's the role of trans, I mean, have we discarded transplants too soon? Uh, and the answer is probably yes. There are, the average age of people with CML at the time of diagnosis is about 60 years. So it means half of the people are less than 60. But if we look at Asian countries, then the average age of diagnosis is 50 years. That means that about three quarters of people could get a transplant. So um, if you're living in China um, and you have to pay for your TKI and you're 35 years old, um, you know, you have a choice. You could opt out, you could opt in for a transplant. That might, I mean, of course, there's perhaps a 20% chance you would die immediately but there's an 80% chance that you would be cured. Or, but if you're 60 or 70 years old, uh, living in uh, the UK 
where we have national health insurance, maybe you don't care. Why should you take a chance of dying in the uh, first one or two months? So um, we've probably, disc the, the bottom line of all of this is we've probably need, when we talk to patients, we probably need in an appropriate person to present this option. Because as I said, very few, only 15% of people with uh, CML are ever going to get off of a TKI in their lifetime. So time to reconsider.